Then, handing them his royal signet, he said, I have exercised the demons. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. We've had some luck. I've decided to open one ancient shard because it got me to a milestone marker in a summon rush. 50 gems, so I figured, what the hell? It was like, it was almost like we got half the cost of the shard back. We got very lucky, we've got a marked. Now this is a, a champion who is uh, excellent. I think, I mean, maybe these ratings are a little, little underrated. She's four and a half for Demon Lord. I think she's fantastic for Demon Lord. Uh, I think she's just generally all round good in the game. She's a rare support magic affinity champion. Uh, I'm four starred her immediately, ascended her immediately, just as fast as I could. She's going to jump the queue ahead of Deacon Armstrong and ahead of Burangiri. Certainly to 50. I might 60 her. Uh, that's how much I like her as a champion. Uh, so let's go through her kit and talk about why. A1 attacks one enemy, 30% chance of placing decreased defense. It is the small version, but for Clan Boss, you've only got one target. You can pump this up by another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%. So it's an 80% chance in area one of putting small decreased defense. For a beginner clan boss team, that's good enough for me. Uh, obviously, 60% increased defense or decreased defense would be better. So I do have Ugo who can perform this role. This bigger version will overwrite the smaller version. So it's not too bad. Um, but if you do get it and you don't have an AoE attack down, sorry aoe defense down champion then this is a good move uh, her second move is an aoe that's nice it's good for faction wars it can give her some use in dungeons and it paces the small version of decreased accuracy uh, for two turns now it's on a four turn cooldown if you do invest with books you can get it to three uh, you don't really want decreased accuracy on the clan boss it's not a particularly useful debuff but in other areas of the game it can potentially help you out a little bit unlikely uh, it's one of the worst debuffs in my opinion particularly as a starting you know starting a new account decreased accuracy is not something you look for but it is still an aoe but this is the move that we're really excited and interested in she does block debuffs on all allies for one turn so if you get this timed right in the clan boss it will block the stun you know you can get it to block the decreased speed decreased attack on affinity and so on and so forth and then 60% increased defense and all allies for two turns. So the big version of increased defense, 60% extra defense on your champions makes you last so much longer in clan boss. Annoyingly, it's on a six turn cooldown, but with books, it comes to three. So if you can get this champ moving fast enough, then you can have it so that the increased defense is always up. And if you speed tune properly, you can get the block debuffs always stopping the stun. And that's why she's so useful. Uh, in clan boss she's got a defense faction crypt aura of 15 percent now i'm definitely going to book her but we've got cvc on tuesday we may as well double dip for that the only skill i'm really interested in getting booked out is this one so if we pump three books in and her a3 is maxed out i would stop booking her at that point but some books in the a1 is going to be helpful for faction wars um or anywhere that i don't have a decreased defense champ Maybe not that much handy for faction wars because of course we do have access to war maiden in the campaign who does aoe decreased defense and it is the big version um and i'm not bothered about this move getting any books at all so if we get lucky it'll be three books to book her out if we get unlucky it's going to be another nine on top of that so we will see now where is she good well clan boss amazing of course but she's actually going to be quite handy in dungeons. So she will do block debuffs, which is obviously handy in some of the potion keeps. She'll do block debuffs, uh, which is handy in Ice Golem. You can block out the heal reduction, the reduced defense, the decreased accuracy. Increased defense is useful in Ice Golem. Obviously, if the Ice Golem slams you whilst both his minions are up, it ignores all of your defense, in which case it doesn't matter. But if he's hitting you in general, or he's hitting you with only one of his minions alive, then boosting up your, de yeah, your de defense is going to be very helpful. For Spider, block debuffs is great, because whoever the Spiderlings are attacking for one turn will have those debuffs blocked. 
Increased defense will keep your champs alive. It's great to pair with a defense-based hitter, so some more like Shield Guard will get you a good amount of spider progression once we've got a Bills. Dragon's Lair, similar story here. Block debuffs is handy. You've got Weaken, uh, decreased attack, so the, um, lots of poisons. So if you can block all of that crap out from the dragon, so much the better. Increased defense, again, is helpful. Obviously, the dragon does ramp up in damage as it goes, but it will help you out survive that fight longer. I'd say the only place she's not particularly useful is Fire Knight. No multi-hit, but again, she would block the decreased speed and increased defense when the Fire Knight gets a turn and whacks you would be handy. Uh, don't think she's going to be useful in either of these two dungeons, but that will r remain to be seen. She's also going to be quite useful in Tag Arena because we would be able to set up a team you know, that would have something like uh, her and Shield Guard and, I don't know, maybe Armager, I think, is defense-based as well. Where's he gone? There he is. So something like this, she could put the increased defense on and then two defense-based champions could come in and hit a little bit harder. So she's kind of, she's okay for Taggery. And I wouldn't build her in a main... Uh, arena team unless my nuka was defense based but again she'll, she'll allow your team to survive a hit maybe as well with that increased defense up so again useful champion there so all around i think she's uh you know i've been making a lot of guides saying don't build this champion the crap she is definitely a good champion to invest in now a slight downside is you require a copy of her to fuse razin so she goes here now i've got lucky I've pulled a Lich, so I don't actually need her for the fusion. But in general, you can four-star her, ascend her, you can always use her as the fusion. Would I 60 her? Uh, I'd strongly consider it because there are a couple of champs you can pair with her from the campaign uh, who make her, sh make her kit a little bit better. So we can go and shop ourselves Valerie from stage one. And what she will do is she will increase uh, the buff duration so block uh, debuffs and the increased defense so she'll put that on and make it last longer so it's increased defense for two turns valerie can come in she can make it three turns it's on a three turn cooldown and we can pop the increased defense back on and then she would also potentially pair quite well with high elf heiress so she does AOE increased speed. You've got to get copies of her to book it out. But again, 30% increased speed on everyone. That might make it so that your, your champion is taking so many turns that the marked is basically getting the increased defense out all the time. So it's always up when the clan boss is hitting you, uh, which again could be good. So you can maybe use all three of those together uh, as a little combo. Put her, put RS in a toxic set. She has a passive that will counterattack whenever the clan boss basically hits anybody. So that's nice. You can get some decent poison damage out there. Um, and she also does a, a cleanse as well, one debuff off. So let's say you block buffs, you haven't got it speed tuned quite correctly. Well, she will do a cleanse when she does this move. And it's on a three turn cooldown. So again, two turns, pair it with Valerie. You've got three turns of increased speed uh, and that will keep your team motoring along. So that's something. So we haven't built ARS yet don't have a copy of Valerie yet uh, but they're two things that I'm considering and I think Marked really does um, make both of their kits stand out and then you've only got two slots to fill one of course would be your Poisoner which would be Kale um, and then at the moment the next champion for me would probably be Ugo because she does do the big uh, increase of uh, big decrease defense and she does also leech and she's going to be a 60 uh, but Shiromani, if we can get her awakened, then she could do some brimstone damage, so that could be nice. Um, and other than that, we'll be looking for maybe HP burn, but certainly an attack down champion. So we could do those three rares that we talked about, Kale uh, and an attack down champion, but we don't have one at the moment. So yeah, that's where we are. So Marked, definitely a champion to build to 40 for the fusion minimum. Really good champion to take to 50. I think you get a lot of use out of her. And I think even if you're 60, you're going to use her a lot. Uh, basically, until you get an epic version of increased defense, 
on a three turn cooldown for two turns and block debuffs is quite nice. So yeah, I like her. I like her a lot. We're going to build her. Right, that's the guide. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, I'll maybe do a full guide when she's maxed out and stuff, but at the moment, lucky pull, quite happy with this champion I want to invest in for a change. I've been Phil Casual. Take it easy, guys. Peace. <laughs>